Nice to see Arthur McCanty Jr. in the ring. Part of the great folklore and tradition of New York. Terrific referee and following the footsteps of his dad, who of course did the uh, great Ali Frazier fight here in 1971. Historic arena, historic uh, lineage with the officials. And the atmosphere is truly electric, guys. <laughs> Round one scheduled for 12 for the Welter Lake Championship of the world. Judo's a southpaw. Toto comes out throwing the right, throwing to the body. I would assume part of the strategy might be, guys, to try to work that body and take some of the speed away from Judo. But if you notice, Zab is starting with that right hand down kind of low to guard against the left hook to the body. He's going to jab from down around his waist. And he's capable of doing that. You have to have a lot of speed to do that. Working the jab out there. That and he's extremely relaxed in there. Yes. Yes, always has been. So the thing about Cotto is he likes to start with the left hook to the body. So Zab knows, you know, if I start down here, maybe I take him a little bit out of his attack. Toto looking a little thicker through the body coming into the ring. Has been very comfortable fighting at 147, as we mentioned. Just couldn't carry 140 anymore. Definitely the biggest challenge of Toto's career tonight. You know, one thing we should point out right now, there will be no hair issues in this fight. Uh, and that's a beautiful level uppercut by yeah. Judah. And there's the speed right there that we were talking about. Counting him, and I think he's hurt Toto, and he's got him in the corner. And he's this has always been the Achilles heel. Oh, this is the Achilles heel. Oh, oh, oh. Judah full start. jump on this. Judah trying to capitalize. What a yes. unbelievable moment in the first round. A low oh, No. And here yeah. have we seen this before? And you know, it's so unnecessary, Wally, because he hurt him and caught him with that left uppercut, and he shot it out like a rocket. And I think he's trying to use every advantage in the book. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that just... He's going to try to apologize. Miguel's going to try to apologize now, and I don't think Judas is much of a good boy. And he slowed down his own momentum. Absolutely. He slowed right. down his own momentum that he had in the fight, because that was his round so far. Yes, it was. I, I don't understand what Zab Judas is thinking. He hurt his own momentum. Well, let's... You know, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see the replay. But, uh, you know, I fear that you're right. Now, I guess he's going to take the whole five minutes, because if not, then you weren't really that hurt. You talk about slowing down your up. There's he's, he's ready to go. I just going. don't understand. Neither do I. We'll have to take a look at it when we see the replay, guys. That definitely was a break for Kodo. I mean, he got caught with a beautiful uppercut. Any time to recover for Kodo. It's a great point. And it's, it just changed the whole momentum of the first round, guys. Cotto got caught. He'll learn from that. He seemed to be fine. He knows what kind of speed he's in against, of course. He's been training for this. And it's not like he hasn't been here before. He was hurt so badly by Winter and Corley and some other guys. I mean, you know, he's, he's been in this spot before. He's not hurt nearly as badly now. Keep him up, go. Still going to be Judas round, I believe. Judo reminds me a little in that instance of like an Andrew Galata. He's, he has a little success and he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do and he ends up hurting himself. And doing things that. Self sabotage. He got that right. Plenty of action in that first round. I don't even know how to score that round now. <laughs> I gave it to Judo. I want to see the replay though. I really do. Give me water. Give me water. Go okay. right, breathe. 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 Let's breathe. Give me water. Give me water. He did good. First round. See the boxing to the and see he's throwing all wide shots. He can beat you. Yeah. Stay in control, baby. You got to go to the body. You got to work into the body. Keep your guard up. Always being busy. Try not to get caught with those shots. You got to work the body, Miguel. All right, here we go, guys. All right, let's get a look at it here. Let's see. Oh, what a shot. That it was a left uppercut. But now let's see the low blow. Well, uh, a little uh, bit of a delayed reaction. It was well. not, that was is, not a low blow. But uh, let me ask you this, all right, I, I agree, delayed reaction. What is he trying for, first round DQ? 
Yeah, I, that's, I don't understand the strategy. He just, likes, get he just likes drama. <laughs> Maybe. I think he just, he's a drama queen. <laughs> You're not going to disqualify Miguel Cotto on now, one low blow. Now, Judah came out slinging a hard right jab. It was just above the cup line, uh, slightly low. Yeah. But it was uh, not as painful as he made it appear to be. With, with due respect to both of you guys, I'm going to leave that judgment to the man who took the punch. Okay. I just, I, look, I've seen a lot. Look, you know, we're not talking about a lot of tight low blows here. The, yeah. We hear Chinese going area. off at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I mean, I know, but that's such a sensitive area. I'm going to leave it to each individual to make his you, own choice. You know, that first round, I think, is is just a great, just a, just a great example of Judah's career as a whole. He showed flashes of brilliance, but then there's always some drama to mess it up. You're absolutely <laughs> right. We were wondering if all hell would break loose. <laughs> Two minutes in. Cotto was moving right. more forward in this round. Probably would be a little more cautious to avoid that left hand uppercut. Big power shot he took just below the chin and on the neck in round one. Nice right hook by Judah. And then Zab took a shot between the Z and the A on his belt line. Mm -hmm. And Cotto's working that body now the way he wants to. And there was a good chopping left there by Cotto as well. He's got a powerful, powerful punch from just six to eight inches away if he can land it on you. Much like that punch that George Foreman did when he knocked out our friend over here, Michael Moore. Hey, don't say it too loud. He's going I know, he's right over here. Way. You know, Cotto's being relentless. He's doing a good job of, of, of keeping the pressure on Judah, and that, that'll take it. So Judah did such a great job counter-punching. I'd like to see him set his feet a little bit more and answer. That was a nice right to the ball. He's got two of them in there. Yeah. I think Cotto might have gotten his uh, customary wake-up call, though, in round one. Under one minute left in round two, scheduled for 12. Cotto trying to dip to the body. Judith did a good job defensively this round and rounding some sharper punches, but the address has been Cotto in this round. See, the thing about Cotto is he's like a lot of baseball pitchers. you got to get them early because he just gets better and stronger as the fight goes on. That's a great example. Yeah, he settles in, figures them out. Good body punch for Cotto. He digs it downstairs. Now that little flicking jab's not going to be effective for Judo against this guy. He's got to put, he's got to sit down his punches a little more. Wow. Right now gets the ropes. There's a swarming. Judo's got to double up on that jab and answer oh, with that little bit like this. He and he hurt him again. A little dance. He hurt him again. Yes, he did. He's got to, just as I said, he's got to let that left hand go. He's got to let that left hand go. A good flush punch. And still, when he's let it go, he's been able to connect with Cotto and hurt him. He's fast. He's so fast and he's so strong. And there's another beautiful, I mean, look at how, when he lets it go, how you effective know, he can be. There's nothing more encouraging to a fighter than knowing he can hurt the other guy. And Zab knows that. Gosh, it's another tough round to score, gentlemen. <laughs> See, I gave that one to Cotto. That's why you always have to throw that left first. You have to throw the left first so he gets on the defensive so he can't counter with his left. Breathe deeply. You're doing great. Don't forget your game plan. Keep your hands up and attack the body. Don't bring your hands down, I'm telling him. When he come in, you see what I'm saying? Listen, listen to me, look at me. When he come in, see some shots, tie him up. Press the body, you got two glasses out for him. See some shots to the body, yeah. keep throwing him. Keep moving into the body, boom, boom, in the body. Stay with the jab. All right, let's take a look. Now you see some vintage Kodo body work. It looks like a Kodo round all the way. Then we get into the final 30 seconds, and what happens? Well, let's watch. Ducking away in there. It wasn't even shot. that much of a punch. It wasn't, but he caught it clean and yes, he caught him beautiful it. and it made him stumble backwards. You'd like to see him settle his, uh, set his feet and throw combinations, set him up with a couple, with two stiff right jabs and follow it up with that left. Oh boy, if that doesn't encourage that Judah, you know, nothing will. He's caught him with two shots that have had him stumbling backwards already. Yeah, yeah. Round three. Different shots, a straight, a straight left hand and an uppercut. Zab Judah's in the red trunks. Cotto's got the uh, Puerto Rican colors on his trunks, plus a whole lot of advertising. Low jack. <laughs> so we can bang. find him in case we have to find him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Roy Cotto out to Ricketti Jr. to Judah. Cotto's having trouble finding him. Maybe he should put Low Jack on the, 
Judah. Well, well Judah's one of those fighters that gives you, aside from being fast, he gives you a lot of angles, he turns the shoulder well. The one Ooh. thing that hurts Judah in this fight is he's not very active. The, you exactly know? right. He's his own enemy. <laughs> yeah, he picks his own shot. Oh, oh here we go again. Wow, I, that, I mean, that is dramatic. That is dramatic. And I think you're right when you mention he's going for the DQ. I hope not. Why do that when you can win the fight out? I don't understand, Wally. He's <laughs> hurt him twice in the fight. Keep your eye on the corner because, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, you know what? That was a that was a solid shot to the cup. Uh, he, you know, if he's acting now, Mario, I got to tell you, he's pretty good. You better watch his career. I, I, this I, guy's pretty good. I'll tell you what. I think it's Academy Award winning, to tell you the truth. All right, no, let's no, take no. another look at it. Uh, this is this is they run the bell here, guys. Great, no. Wow. Yeah, that one run the bell. Ouch. So has has, has he uh, taken a point away? No, correct. He said that's two. I didn't see him take the point away. He doesn't want to take a point away in a fight this big, but well, you know what? Well, the rules are the, are the same. Yeah, you no got matter to. how big the fight is. And Arthur's a good referee. Oh, uh, you're so I mean if he thinks that Arthur's questioning. He's asking. If he's was asking what's the low blow. blow. Nothing like the instant replay rule, I guess. And where is his blood coming from with Miguel Cotto? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. There's blood on his chest. Right on it's coming from his lip. It's coming from his lip. Plus that, have that, is, that is a result of, a, of, I think, his vicious uppercut from earlier. Because he's coming from his lip. If, if Judah doesn't have inspiration now, he's hurt him. He's, he's made him bleed. Cotto's going at him. Now, this is where Judah needs to step it up. And so Judah doesn't take it off. Change. It's to his advantage. He's got him frustrated. Maybe this is part of a game plan that Judah's trying to mastermind all along to engage him to stand toe to toe with him, where he knows he can get the best, the better part of the, of the action there. Take two dives and then get up and knock him out, huh? Who knows? It's strategy, but who knows? Because it works, you know what? Other guys will do it. The bottom line with Judah is you never know. Cotto stepped up the pace after the low blow here. Maybe Trump knowing that Judah could be easily frustrated and unpredictable. But Cotto's got to be very careful because he's had a, a oh, lot of wow. speed. A he's, lot of speed. And he has yet to figure out an answer to that left uppercut. And Judah controlled it well. He's still trying to bang the body. I think it's a matter of being patient with Judah, take him to the later rounds and see if he will unravel. Judah's got a lot of talent, folks, and we've known it all along. He's got a lot of talent, but he's never been able to put together his talent with his strategy, his game plan, and execute it all and make it come together in one night. Well, his history tells you that the longer the fight goes on, he's the one who will unravel. There's that up there. He landed it again. He landed it again, Wow. You know, Alan, he's, he's putting on a display with his skills. Well, he's, he reminds me of speed, reminds me of Mayweather. Well, Judah's got a good word about Tiki tack stuff. I mean, the low blows was obvious that last one, but he's got to clear his head and worry about fighting. And Absolutely not, right. This is, the, this is a hurt business. Things happen. you got to be able to work through it. You can't be looking at a referee for help. I took a point away from him, okay? Yeah, but he do it again. Hey, That's too many times. Keep man. it cool. Grease, grease. Back to me. Do another Vegas with me. Let's have to keep it cool. All right. Keep out cool. I took a point away. So he took a point away. And he said, you hear what else he said? We don't want another Vegas. Right. right. That happened that in the Mayweather you, fight. You busted him up. You busted him up. You busted him up. You got to fight him up, baby. Look, stay tight. Look, only tell you here, don't pull straight back. Drop. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Stay right there. Boom. All right, let's take another look at some of the wildness in round three. And there was boom, a collection of uppercuts from Judah. There was the first boom, one. There's another, another one. one. It's a very unorthodox punch, especially coming from the southpaw. And Cotto does not seem to know what to do about it right now. Well, they better figure it out. We're in round four. I believe we did have a point taken away, guys. So we're... It, that could turn the fight right there in the first three rounds, obviously. It's a huge point. Oh, oh, we got blood over the right eye of Judah. Yep, now Judah's cut. Judah's cut. Well, is that a punch or was it a headbutt? I couldn't tell. Uh, I think we'll wait for the replay on that one. I think it was a punch. 
That might inspire Their hands Hale. haven't been that close, but who knows? Now they're getting close again. It's just so furious in there with all the speed. Talk about a rocky beginning. Oh, and Kono going southpaw on us. Yeah. I'm not sure I like that. Yeah, I, I think that plays into Jab. Jab not taking advantage of it. Yeah, it's maybe just trying to confuse Jab. Why would you give away your best weapon, which is your left hook? Just to screw around. I've seen uh, Morales do it before just to prove a point. Which is not a time to be proving points. No. Not Another at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night. Another guy named Sugar Ray Leonard trying to prove a point against Roberto Duran. Roberto lands a pretty good right hand there. Judas seems to have slowed down, but he's looking at he's looking he's that uppercut. Up, yeah. yeah, he's looking for that uppercut, guys. You know, but he, he, you could be waiting all night for that. You got to set it up. You yeah. got to jab to the body, jab to the hips, plant your feet, and that combination's going. Let it come to you. Cotto, meanwhile, is stealing these rounds, winning these rounds, staying busy, and doing what he needs to do. You're right. You have to make something happen. You've got to make something come happen. To you. You're right. It's frustrating to see when you've got a guy the ability of Judah and not forcing more of the action. Cotto settled down a little bit with this round, guys, and now he's got the cut on the top of the head from Judah. It, it came with a flash, so we'll have to look at it as to exactly what happened. And that is just an, that's a bullseye for, for Cotto's left hook. I've got a feeling if he does get Judah to lower that guard, he's going to be able to come in there with that left hook. He likes to go to the body. That's a good combination for Cotto right there. To me, Zab's mistake is that he's not using his jab enough here, and he's allowing Cotto to get set and get started. Nice he's, he, nice well, he's, he's not doing anything of anything enough. He's not right. jabbing enough. He's just not punching enough. <laughs> good point. That's Cotto. Watch out for the elbows. I mean, right there. You see, he should be jabbing to keep Cotto jabbing to come back with that counter left hand. He's allowing Cotto to take that step in. The cat has got his hands full of the heads inside. Another blistering round here. Cotto doing a lot of damage here in this round. His best round so far with the blood dripping out of his mouth. Blood coming down the right eye of Judah. A punch right at the end. The candy steps in and pulls him apart. The crowd goes wild because it's a large Detroit Cotto crowd in here to say the least. Oh boy, I have the feeling something unusual is going to happen in this fight. Which for Judah is the usual. Take a deep breath. No water. We're asking for no water. No water, please, guys. No water. That's just a bloody lip, guys. Just a bloody lip. It's nothing. Don't worry about it, Miguel. It's nothing. It's just a bloody lip. Four action. Maybe we'll be able to see where the cut happened here. The heads did come together right there. It did. Accidental. But I think that may have been where it happened. Hmm. Now, you know, the cut lip is not inconsequential because the swallowing of blood over Absolutely. a long period of time tires the matter, makes them sick. And Cotto's doing a great job going to the body. Round five. In front of an excited Madison Square Garden crowd. It's our pleasure to bring you this card tonight, everyone. I'm Alan Masson, got with Wally Matthews and Mario Lopez. And this is a good example, gentlemen, of Cole was in with a guy who's faster than him, who I believe is stronger than him, but he is asserting himself, he is applying effective pressure, he's sticking to his game plan, and he's doing what he needs to do to win this fight. Yes, because he's keeping Zab Judah busy playing defense. In the meantime, Zab is spending a lot of time looking over at his own corner for instructions. You would think at this point he would know exactly what he needs to do. Lead right from Miguel Cotto. Arthur McCann, he breaks him apart. Now, that's what I like to see a referee do. Don't let him clinch up in there. Get him apart as soon as possible. Good left hand for Cotto. Judo's been taking a lot of punches the last two rounds, flicking the jab a little bit. And he's been so effective with the left uppercut, but he's going to have to do more to be able to set, to set it up. He needs to start flicking that jab with authority to the body, to the, head, head. to the bloody lip, yep. and come back with a straight left or, or an uppercut. Oh, he just caught a few on the inside, too. Judah has a tendency to get frustrated, to say the least. 
A lot of blood on the trunk of Cotto. I think you're starting to see the frustration already. And you know, it's only the fifth round of a 12 rounder. Good luck to have Cotto out there. I already have the feeling that Judas kind of let his moment pass. But you're exactly right, Wally. And, and you know, I gotta tell you, it's frustrating as, as both a fan and, and commentating on this fight because of what could have been, and he seems to just be hurting himself by not asserting himself. Oh, good jab for Cotto. Well, you had it right in that first round. It's the story of his career in three minutes. And that Judas looking at the referee, protect yourself at all times, is rule number one. Yeah, here we go again. Looking to the ref for help. I mean, that's yeah. all signs of first. Oh, those combinations are really doing a damage on him, not only physically, but I think mentally. You know what? If you feel like you have an issue, but you got to look to the referee, you have a way to even it out. Hit the guy. Yeah. So he started looking to anybody for help, and as I said, he was looking over to his dad in the beginning of the round. Yeah. Looking to referee. It's a coward's way out. Start to, to just put it bluntly and start uh, looking for excuses. It, it's, just, it's, it's a sign of of, um, of indecision, and, and you know. That's that left hook for the first fight. time. The uppercut trying to get in there. And, and it could be pointed out that look at that left hand. But Cotto is, is is doing what he wants to do in this fight. Cotto's not looking at anybody else for help right now. No. Oh, another beautiful uppercut by Judah. And you wonder, but another one, why he doesn't do it more often? Because he lands it on the button every single time. Well, I'm a strong proponent of the belief that fighters do things for a reason yeah. and don't do things for a reason. Listen, baby, you're doing great. You're he ain't doing it because he's getting hurt. You got to throw him you know, He's up on the round. He's up. He's up on the round. He did slay squarely on that big bloody lip, he's though. He's winning the round. He's six coming up. Six. But, yo, he's winning the round, man. Nice round, Phil. Nice round. That's it. The lips already stopped bleeding, Miguel. You don't have to worry about it. Watch his head. Watch his head. Where's the water? Give me the water. I right, had some Kodo action from round five. There's a good right Beautiful hand. Right. And that was when he was turned southpaw. It was pretty good. This one actually comes in behind the ear a little bit with the left hook. Best punch of the round, though, came from Zab, right? Yeah, yeah, the end with that uppercut. Not enough, though. Too little, too late. Now, it's interesting that Zab was asking in the corner what round. Uh, it's around six. Um, a little early, there. little early to be <laughs> counting that. <laughs> Just an observation. Judas said it when he sits back and waits to counter. He reminds me a lot of Mayweather, except he's turned around the other way. Oh, there's a lot of similarities between the two of them. I think Zab actually might be a little bit more aggressive than Floyd. Oh boy. You know what? I kind of fault the referee for that. Yeah. You know, you want to give a warning. You got to be decisive. You got to get in there. Let's keep it clean. Okay. Nice sportsmanship from Cotto. Cotto bleeding? Cotto is bleeding. The top of the head. He's bleeding from the eye, from the eye and the lip now. From my head, but well, I must say, speaking personally and for my dry cleaner, I'm glad we're a row back. <laughs> this is a bloody mess tonight. Oh man. Cotto's gloves very wet. Hurt his vision a little bit. He keeps pawing away. These are one of those you just sit here and hold your breath, fights, guys, because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you know. This whole right hand, hand like this. Hand. You know, you hate to harp on it, but with Judah in there, you, there's a good chance something nuts is going to happen. Uh, the track record speaks yes. for itself. Historically, it's that's not like been you're the case. making that up. No. <laughs> Round six, halfway gone. Miguel Cotto's been doing the same pressures. It's a matter for him of attrition if he could just beat down Judah and beat his real will down. But Judah still got so much fire in that left hand. There's a right hand that got in for Cotto. That's going to go in. But be patient. Cotto will be patient. And go, Cotto going immediately to the body after catching him with that lead right hand. Oh, left hand. Good combination. He's a great finisher, though, Cotto. I'll tell you what. He knows how to finish. Judah's in some trouble now. Kudo yelling him, urging him on, saying, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and the irony is he's the one that needs to start going. <laughs> now, you'll notice the uppercut that's been so effective. He's not as accurate now. He's been beaten down so much in this fight. It's not going to be as crisp and as clean for him when he's taking this much punishment. 
Alberto's face a bloody mess. He doesn't care. I'll guarantee you he doesn't care. Yeah, he went, he turned around, guys, again. Just for a second there. He's back to conventional. And there he goes. Now he's back to he's South, back South Park. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen him do this. Neither have I. I've seen it in Puerto Rico briefly once. Now, he, he is capable, he mentions at the time no. of doing it, but he just, I think he's doing a mental thing, guys, with Judah. I agree 100%, and I think that was a huge round for Cotto. I think Judah's showing real, like, terminal frustration now. Suck it up, champ, suck it up. Come on, you gotta work on that eye, work on that eye. Everything's okay, Miguel. Your lip's fine. Yelling at the officials that came here to do our job, we're fine. All right, most of the action came from Cotto in that round. I mean, this was probably his best round of the fight, and there he almost sends Judah down with that short right hand. And there it is, another angle. Best punch of the fight so far, from Cotto, anyway. I hate to draw comparisons, but it reminds me of the old days of Chavez Sr. when he just chopped you down and chopped you down and oh, chopped yeah. you down and take your speed away and take your legs away. And he didn't care how long it took. That methodical. But this is Miguel Cotto, who's got some bloody shorts. Maybe he shouldn't have worn white tonight. <laughs> the advertising shows up better on white trunks anyway. So does the blood. Then the blood. Jab Judas on the left side of your screen in the red trunks. He's going to have to make some uh, adjustments here and try to regain some confidence. I, I just don't know how to read Zap Judah. Nobody else does Nobody in this does. building. I, it's, it's frustrating, i got to tell you. <laughs> and now he's working the jab effectively. He can set up that left hand with it. It's the one thing that slows down Cotto. Yeah, because he's jabbing with some authority now. Before, he's just kind of sticking it out there, you know, putting nothing behind it to keep Cotto off. But he put something behind those, and you notice Cotto couldn't do anything. A little bit of right hand stuck in for Cotto. Round seven. And if you notice, in the corners between rounds, uh, Judah's father, Yoel, gets more and more animated, more and more frustrated with himself. He does a lot more punching than his son does. Hey, he's, he's not exactly a calming influence. No. <laughs> As a father myself, I would think it would be very difficult to train your oh, son and maintain impossible. your Impossible. Impossible. Yeah, I don't impossible. know how they that, do it. That's your blood in there. and. I just, I, I've never agreed with that combination, but, but to each his own. I thought it worked to Sugar Shane Mosley's detriment. Felix Trinidad's. Felix oh, Trinidad's. Yeah. It's never really worked to anybody's benefit. I know I couldn't do it. Here we are, round seven. A couple of good body punches from, uh, from Judah. He's showing signs of life. It's just, it's just amazing. Come back in round seven like he has and doing the kind of things he needs to do. That hurt. Well, it's helped that Cotto has kind of slowed down the pace a little bit this round. Oh, oh, another nice, man, beautiful shot. A couple big shots. A couple big shots. To it. And that's the kind of judo that we need to see. And Cotto, who's taking it. And that's the judo we need to see at least those big punches in those hard counts. Cotto's holding on. Cotto's holding on now. I'll tell you what, though, for a guy whose chin is questionable, Cotto stood up to a tremendous punch He ran into it the first one. We see it on the replay. It's not to be believed. And Judah's round is round seven so far, to say the least. And you wonder why Judah doesn't go right back to get on the inside, letting his hands go. This Clearly, is him. He fights in spurts. And it, it is frustrating. I mean, you picked the perfect word. He also, I guess, the guy who's not going to give you spurts. You're going to have the same pressure constantly. You've got you to pressure back. You've got a chance to win this fight. You've got a chance to throw this guy. Exactly that. It's one thing if you don't have the ability, but if you have the ability and not take advantage of it, it's so discouraging. Wow. Big judo round. Is this possible? My scorecard after seven rounds is dead even, and I guess it is possible. So, so, so is mine. Point so, 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 yes. Dad, you got a punch. He can't take your shots. I told you that from the beginning. You can't take it. That's what I want to do. You want to tell Dad? 
Round eight coming up there. Start putting together short combinations. Step around him. Inside. One, two, three, four. Low. Low. He can't take. Low, all right, let's take a look at Miguel Cotto's jab. You see it snapped back the head of Judah, but you know what? This is all Judah's round. First one in a long time. Maybe we'll get to see that uppercut that Cotto just runs into. Wow. So for a guy with a bad chin, he stood up to a pretty good punch right there. You know, and Yoel Judah, Zab's father, the trainer, I, I think nailed him on the head. He can't take really his punch. He can't take it. Judas maybe have landed, what, tens, if, if that solid shots, and, and, and they've been effective on no, Cotto. No doubt, no doubt. The more effective punches in terms of hurting the other guy have come from Zab Judah. Speed of power. I was just thinking of that earlier, watching a corner where Freddie Roach works, and watching a corner tonight with <laughs> polar <opposites>. the elder <laughs> Judah. <laughs> polar opposites. The difference in philosophy, I guess. West Coast versus East Coast. As Freddie tries to get his point across in subtle ways. And <laughs> Which I happen to agree with because there's so much chaos going on with the crowd and your adrenaline. Right. I think I would like a calming influence. Absolutely. It's <laughs> like being a parent almost. You don't want your kids to see you out of control. Right. Exa exactly. It's a great example. Arthur McKinney's going to need a dry cleaner. <laughs> We're in round eight. <laughs> for a new shirt. You know, Cotto might have taken a little bit off in round seven, and it cost him. You can't let this guy. But Judah's having a good round here, too. He's just that, that left. When he decides to commit to the jab, he's got a good, hard jab. I'll tell you what, when he decides to just let his hands go. Yes. But you know what? Ability comes in all different forms. And it's not just physical ability. Somehow mentally, he just cannot keep his focus in a fight the way Cotto can. Nice talking and, and again, again, I go back to Andrew Galata, who seems to, seems to have all the physical ability yeah. in the world, but doesn't seem to mentally <laughs> yes. have it together. Cotto went back to the right hand of the body. and seems to be trying to turn this round around a bit. Uh, Judah did look over at the referee for some reason, which is very unusual. Not for him, but... <laughs> Good left hand from Cotto. That body oh, lift is getting really, really, really bad. Now Judah sticks his tongue out at Cotto for whatever reason. Cotto, I think he's got one of those good shots. Yeah, he's got one of those busted lifts. He's oh, busted up he's no side. Got a few good shots. Hand Judah. left for Cotto. Judah says bring it, which is never a good sign. Cotto being busy. Cotto being the aggressor. Judah's starting to punch him. Judah's starting to act a little wiggy in there, guys. Trying to do some funny things as you predicted, Wally. I don't know how it's helping him to take uncontested punches like that. And seemingly relishing more. In front of 20,658 fans tonight here. Wow. What a huge crowd and what a great night for boxing. Judah doing some strong and a nice beautiful uppercut by Judah. Ha. Maybe try to sneak it in there. Snuck it in and he landed, but again, not throwing it enough. Cotto relentless in his pursuit and doing what he has to do to take his round. Cotto's got one of those busted up lifts on the inside and the outside, guys. Oh. Terrific recovery round for Cotto. Like the old days, Wally, 20,658 here at the Garden. You know, even in the old days, we didn't have too many nights like this. You got your daughter down there, your family. Yo, Zab, wumble with this bit. You got to keep hitting him. It's nothing. He can't. He's dead now. One, two, three, four. Stay there. Four. Dad, you got to go. Feel good, Come here. Feel good. Let it go. Let it go. He's invoking the family now. Well, there he is. He starts throwing more punches than his son. All right, this was an all Cotto round. And here we can see where Zab is in the corner here. There's one, two, three. Cotto is southpaw as well. Right, throwing, that's Judah's favorite weapon, the, the straight left. Dominant round. Here we go. Round nine, Cotto comes straight down, starts backing Judah up. 
Judas Corner, I don't think doing him any favors in invoking the family in Philadelphia. That has nothing to do with what he's facing right now. And, and the right eye of Judah seems to be closing rather quickly. He's blinking it a lot. He's having trouble seeing that. Yeah, for a while, it was, it was kind of staying stable, right? Because it's been cut for a few rounds. Left hand right. from Cotto. And, and there's another left hand from Judah. Good punch. Good counter. I'll say overall, though, Cotto's fought the exact type of fight he needed to fight tonight, although he's absorbed some wicked punches and got a point taken away. This, yeah. this is the kind of pressure he had to put on this guy. Judah's really having trouble seeing out of that eye. That eye's taking a turn for the worse. And Cotto's taking full advantage of it, coming with some big left hooks. But Cotto's got to be patient, which is his trademark here. Cotto scored when hitting Zappa. Oh, nice, which is back. That eye looks bad for Judah. Downstairs goes Cotto. Blood streaming down from Zap Judah. Cotto's oh, been bloody for a long time with a busted lip. We're in round nine. Oh, wow. Beautiful uppercut from Miguel Cotto. And the left hook to the body is starting Judah to come back. This combination to the head. Judah like holding on now with that left oh, arm. Man. This could be Miguel Cotto's best round. Cotto really quite out of Judah still has got the speed, guys. He can counter if he wants to. I don't know about that, Alan. I think all the meters are going down. Cotto. Hands are going down. The head and the body. They're going Cotto. Big miss for Judah from the right hand. Cotto boring in. Down to one knee goes Judah. Out of nowhere. Just wow. takes a knee out of nowhere. Wow. Couldn't take the relentless pressure. Couldn't take the overwhelming punch. They're going to stop the fight. The corner's going to stop the fight. The final's going up the steps. And why the inspector stop them? I have no idea. Cotto withering down. Cotto knows how to finish. And he will finish. Given the opportunity. She got the longest 30 seconds of Zab Judah's life right here. Cotto. You know, you can't measure heart. Can't measure courage and toughness. I think Miguel Cotto just arrived tonight. Proving that he does have a chin that can take it. Now watch Judah though, guys. He's still got that. I mean, look at it. He sees that. I don't know what's coming to this guy. Oh, 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 oh. Are you kidding me? He took a knee a minute ago. He's, I don't know, he's the, the most. Uh, he had to figure him out. He's baffling. He's baffling. He's baffling. That's a perfect word. <laughs> he's baffling. He takes a knee in the last 15 seconds. He's got power and speed. And it, well, you know what? The Mayweather fight all over again. The Mayweather fight all over again. That eye looks bad, guys. The fight will change. Don't let him walk in you out. He's doing the best. He's doing the doctor if you see that eye. Yeah. It's an old trick. They put the, they put the biggest, one, two, three, four. Uh, most large man in their camp to the right of Judah. Here we go. All right, here you're going to see some of some of the Cotto barrage. I mean, it was pretty much a round long barrage until the very end. And then Zab just takes a knee to escape any further punishment. You know, I've always wondered why that isn't a disqualification. You basically said right there you don't want to fight anymore. Good point. I'll take it up with the New York commissioner. When I mean, you just said I don't want to fight. That's basically what you're saying. Then don't hit me. I think you should be able to hit him with the knee. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I know. Yes, he's good. He got disqualified. That's right. Against Montel Griffin. Back to the business. Round ten. Let's see if Cotto can close it out. He's one of the best finishers in the business. The last two rounds have been super Miguel Cotto rounds. Oh, that eye wow. is awful. Yeah. It is so slow and it's split in half. A jab to his right eye. He cannot see anymore out of his right eye. I noticed the technique in the Judah corner. There's a very large man in that corner who sat to his right. The, the, the doctor couldn't get around him so big to look at the eye. But it maybe it's consequential at this point. But I, you know, that's a well-respected and revered trick. Block the doctor. Now look at Judah showing speed combinations that we haven't seen all night. Now if we would have seen those combinations all night, I think it would have been a totally different fight. But he just doesn't have the ability to do that all night. Yeah. You know, he just can't. 
mentally he can't do it, and in some ways physically he can't do it. You know, he takes rest. But you're right, he fights about 15 seconds of every round. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Cotto took a little bit of rest here in round 10, but every time he does that, he seems to give Judah some kind of inspiration. So maybe you just keep flying until you can't, can't swing anymore. Now, Cotto's dropped his hands a little bit throughout this fight. I think he's felt like a tough fight for him, too. I mean, you know. Well, he's taken all, you know, that, that Judah could throw at him, just not enough coming from Judah. Sure, I mean, even though he's done most of the damage here, he has taken his share, and, you know, this has not been an easy fight for him. Oh, not an easy he's fight. He's left-handed right now, guys. Fighting left-handed, he tricked his back. That's uh, an uppercut. Well, he's trying, man. I want to sneak punch. I was surprised he's trying. I mean, a man who took a knee last round and now he's a different fighter. Still hoping to sucker him into that punch one more time. He's caught him with a straight left hand as well. Mm -hmm. he, he, and he's abandoned that. Keep it clean, sir. I wouldn't expect Cotto to hit the press conference while he's getting that lip stitch tonight. You never know. He's got a parade tomorrow. That's right. It's Grand Marshal. I think I'd skip that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he doesn't. You won't make it back to the island. <laughs> Title 10 seconds, round 10. Oh, nice uppercut from Cotto. Judah pounding his chest, and I don't know why. Well, get a second, guys. Let me know how you got it. After we take a look at the corners. Got the championship rounds coming up. Stop, stop, stop. You better, Sam, when you let your hands, only way you got to do is get, you got to punch, man. I know your eyes messed up. Yo, Zab, you got to punch, though. Hey, shit. Yo, Zab, you hurt him this time. Every time you punch, you hurt him. You hurt him. I'm telling you what you're doing. You stop punching. Do all the fighting. One, two, drop. One, two, three. You got it in you. You got to pull it out. Go little walking, but shoot, on, shoot, Go. shoot, shoot, go, shoot. That stand. eye is bad. I'm stressed out listening to his dad. I know. Close your eye, close your eye, Miguel. You work on that eye. Careful, careful with the eye. I can't see. Move, let me work on it. I think Zab is sitting there thinking, is this man really my father? Well, he goes from one fight in the ring to fight in the corner with his father. I swear, yeah, so I'm saying he's fighting everybody. <laughs> Cotto goes up, puts him in the corner. But his father was right, actually. He's absolutely when he, right. When he punches, he does hurt Miguel. Yes. Oh, oh, goes oh. the left hand and the combination to the head. I thought it was a punch. Right 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 Combination for Cotto. To see what Judah has left here. Round 11. Now he's going to try to hold on. He's trying to hold on. Arthur McCann has got his work cut out for him here. See the good news. That's it. Stop the fight. Yo, Judah was right six rounds ago, but I don't think yeah. the kid hasn't shown the ability for a couple of rounds to do that. You gotta give credit to Miguel Cotto. He's a tough individual. He's relentless. He does what he needs to do to win. He proved a lot tonight. He really did. He did. You know, there's still gonna be questions about the chin, but to me, if you take those shots and you get hurt and you come back, that means you have a good chin. You don't have a bad chin. Can you guys think of anybody at 147 who's faster and can throw as much power as Judah and Spurts that he took tonight? No. No, not that speed, his speed yeah, is I'm talking about Margarito. Well, assuming, assuming Mayweather can make 147. Are we assuming that? Or we I just don't think Mayweather, Mayweather has the, the, the wherewithal to go in there and mix it up. No. I mean, he, he can win fights by not getting hurt. He can win fights by not getting hurt. But it, I think a very interesting fight is with Antonio Margarito, who clearly is not half as fast as Judah. But possesses as much power, if not more. I want to see him against Williams, you know, I want to see him. Look at this. Him. Speaking of which.
because I think his stock went down a bit in the past year. They had a rough fight. Got they wanted tonight. Let's take a look at it, Wally. All right, here's the end. And you know, you knew it was coming. You couldn't be sure when. And if anything, you want to know something, Alan. It's more of an accumulation than anything. There's no one sensational punch here. Uh, the right hand was hand, pretty strong. Left. Yeah, but he he had landed punches as good as that earlier in the fight. And at this point, Zab Judah's just got nothing left. And here's the end of it. And he's just at this point scrambling to get out of the way. I think it was a good stoppage, Wally. Yeah, I think his corner. What made. did you have it in your card? I, I had um, at the end. I had Cotto ahead by four going into the last round. But I mean, I could have. If Yoel Judah had said to his son, "You're staying on the stool now. You're not going back out there. We tried. That's it for tonight." I wouldn't have argued. I don't think anybody in here would have. I think this fight card tonight delivered what the best in boxing. We need, we need more of it. I think terrific. Here's the announcement from Michael Buffer. The official time. This contest comes to an end at 49 seconds of round number 11. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, still the WBA welterweight champion of the world, the Carlos Puerto Rico. Before we get up to Mario, I would say we also learned a lot about Koto tonight. His biggest challenge of his young career, I always wondered if he would be able to survive with this.